Thanks everyone for watching another video in um, a series about public transportation and urbanism. And uh, today, following what I uh, uh, streamed last week, which was um, Berlin U and S-Bahn construction that I think should be happening, um, I will post a link to the YouTube video down below. Um, the, uh, so I'm going to talk not, a, not so much about the transportation side, but about the development side, about how to build more and better transit-oriented development. Uh, and my main example of this is going to be Berlin. And um, I promised everyone that I'm going to start with a rejoinder um, about a certain kind of, I call it race blindness and crypto racism, um, by which I mean there's a lot of nimbyism in Berlin, and the nimbyism is generally on the left, not on the right. This does not mean that there's no right-wing nimbyism in Germany. In fact, in Germany, quite a lot of nimbyism is right-wing. I, I would argue to the point that, um, and for example, the Greens in Baden-Württemberg, um, so that's Minister President Winfried Kretschmann, um, they're... Um, so, so they came to so essentially they came to power on NIMBY grounds, opposition to Stuttgart 21, and then the minister president was viewed as very successful and very competent. But uh, but he identifies as a green conservative, um, and kind of different from so kind of you think maybe it was a more moderate kind of green, but usually the more moderate kind of green, someone like Annalena Baerbock is someone who's very pro immigration, someone who has who, who is at this point rooted in mostly the youth vote on um, the uh, uh, and a, a very urban youth vote. Um, I, I kind of joke that everyone, I'm, like, not everyone, I mean, but most people I meet vote green. And yeah, okay, I made a, a biased sample, sure, but it's not, for example, a class math sample. Um, it's an unusually queer sample. Um, it's an unusually young sample, like 35 and under, often even less. And um, this is where the green voting comes from. I mean, like, I understand that it's not, like, I understand there are right wingers in Germany, there are people who vote after, there are people who vote Sado FDP, but the, but a, a random young person who's not terribly right wing might well, vote, probably is voting green and not a spider. Um, so in, but, but in Buddy Wilton book, they're very nimby. Um, and they're also racist. Um, Kretschmann is more racist than, the median for CDU. He would fit in CDU, but he was more racist, I think, than the median. He uh, was doing things about uh, um, trying to get refugees not to settle in Freiburg, uh, whereas a lot of CDU leaders um, are trying to integrate refugees into um, the, the cities and um, states that they are in. Actually, Armin Laschet um, was pretty good at it. I mean, he's currently trying to go after the racist vote and saying that he will not take many refugees in 2015 should not happen again. But, um, the, but, but before, but Armin Laschet was kind of, was anti-racist within CDU before, um, Merkel made school. And, and Kretschmann is so not like this. Um, but, um, so, so that's an example of right wing. So again, he yeah, uses the green conservatives. If you know it's a central left party, he specifically uses the word conservative. Um, so there is a lot of right wing NBSM. Um, but it's just in Berlin, nobody cares what right, what the right thinks. Okay, and let, let me see if we can find you election polls in Berlin. Um, Berlin election polls 2020. Okay, it hell. Okay. Um, if they do, if they don't have it in English, they'll have it. Oh, they do have it in English. Okay, so um, and these. So first of all, remember that Berlin is partly an eastern city, and this means that um. There is no taboo against alliances with Die Linke. Our current government is red, red, green. Um, so add these up. Oh, oh, I see what happened. So this is 56. Even if you count IFD as part of a block with CDU and FDP, which you shouldn't, this is 34. So the left is beating the right here by more than 20 points. Um, so this is so in Berlin nobody cares at this point CDU is has the has this horribly homophobic poster call, um, warning that the Greens would lead to great, to gay experiments on children. Um, and so 
the reason we don't maybe have enough housing would be problems on the left, not on the right. And these problems, as I said, they're race blind crypto racism. So what I mean is it's people who don't like thinking about race very much. They think that Tasa is like a Nazi term. There are people in the Green Party who are trying to remove the word Rasse from the German constitution. So, so the constitution has a clause uh, banning discrimination on various uh, grounds, and one of these grounds is race, um, or in German, Rasse. And uh, they're trying to remove the word Rasse because it implies that there is such a thing as biological race. Um, so this is what I mean by race blindness. Um, and by the way, I, I, I need to stress something. I mean, in general, the center left in Germany is blindingly white. I mean, some, the right is even more so, but the center left is wider. The political elites are wider than their voters, or wider than the population. Um, but one of the two green leaders who proposed that is black. Um, but so, so when I say race blind, this is what I mean. They're trying to remove the word, trying to... Uh, so so it, it, it also gets to why we do not track race in Germany. So if you want to know how many people of color there are in a German city, um, you need to use expre uh, expressions like Berlin, Migrations, um, So 2016 would be bad because, um, so this is actually a good one. Um, unfortunately, the older numbers, so, so you, you saw there was a brief, uh, Redirect. So the redirect. So first of all, nobody can remember what these mean. But second, more, more importantly, the redirects only work for the more recent um, years. So I think before 2018, you can't like the links stop working. So over here, at any rate, they they will tell you how many people there are in Berlin. They uh, with demographics like um, gender and also um, the. Uh, and also they track uh, an age, um, but they don't track race the way they do in the U.S. or the U.K. They track something called migration background. They track Ausland, so they don't even track if you're an immigrant. They track if you're um, an Auslander, um, which, for example, I am not. So in this statistic, so this is from 2020, so I would appear in the statistic as living in Meta, as someone who is not an Auslander, um, but as um, someone who... Um, and it would appear as manlich because I can't get um, gender neutral passport without going through gender police. Um, but, I, but I'm but I'm not Auslander. Um So the fact that I'm an immigrant does not matter. Um, what does matter, however, is that I have migration background. Migration background means that you or one of your parents was born outside Germany. Um, it's all, it, when I, yeah, the French language, so all of continental Europe is like this. What we track is migration background. Um, usually it's done by hypo descent. So if one of your parents is an immigrant, you have migration background. In Sweden, it is done by hyper descent. So both of your parents need to be immigrants for you to count as having migration background. Um, and when they try to do anything further, they will look at specific kinds of migration background. So, um, the, so there's no, and, and it's often not really lumped. So in France, you need to go to random civil rights organizations that maybe ask you if you're Muslim or they maybe try to group things as, let's say, Black, um, Middle East, North Africa, and Asian. Um, and in Germany, they don't even do this grouping very much. So in Germany, usually if you try to look for, a, let's say, political poll of people by uh, migration background, they will lump all migration background people together. Um, and maybe they will do a breakdown of the largest groups, which are Russians and Turks. So you can see how the Turks vote in Germany. You can see how the Russians vote. Very, very occasionally, they will lump the former Soviet Union together. I don't think I've ever seen people lumping even all of Eastern Europe together. So, um, so, so lumping, let's say, Russians, Ukrainians with Poles or Bulgarians. Um, I have never seen an attempt to lump all Arabs together, let alone um, all Middle Easterners. Um, so it's done um, country by country, um, which is annoying, but that's not the race blindness that I'm complaining about. The race blindness is that um, there's a tendency to analyze social trends based on things that are not race, which again, 
we track race here. We don't track it as lumped categories, unfortunately, so it's harder to track, but we do track migration background here. So, um, so first of all, for migration background in general, it's important to understand the population with migration background. You can look in birth, so you can look um, at the Statistische Bericht in Berlin. Statistische Bericht. Look for 2018, 2020. Um, and I think before 2018, that's where the links stop redirecting. I used to compare 2016 with 2019. Uh, unfortunately, again, this doesn't work. So I'm comparing 2018 to 2019, which I don't like. I mean, the numbers are the same. I mean, there, there wasn't any change in the trend. I just don't like using a single year for these comparisons. I would much rather compare 10 years, for example. To establish a trend, and, and here and here's the trend that you can see from this: the trend is white flight. Um, so in the so, so I didn't check every neighborhood. Um, and by the way, these are so also annoyingly in Berlin they lump neighborhoods together. So these are twelve. Uh, these are the twelve boroughs of Berlin. They're called Bezirke. And um, here's here's the map. So these are the twelve Bezirke. Of, uh, of Berlin. And if you know anything about the city, you'll know that um, they don't particularly correspond to neighborhoods. Um, they vaguely correspond to east versus west in that um, all of Pankow, um, Lichtenberg, Mozart Hellersdorf, and Treptow Köpenick are um, eastern. And then also in Friedrichshain, Kreuzberg, Friedrichshain is eastern, Kreuzberg is western. In Mitte, Mitte proper is Eastern, the rest are Western, and these um, other ones are purely Western. So Reinickendorf, Spandau, Schaltenburg, Wilhelmsdorf, Steglitz, Zehlendorf, Temple of Schöneberg, and Neukölln. Um, but, um, but, but other than that, they don't really correspond. Um, they, they keep lumping these together. So you can kind of see there are these internal boundaries. Um, they're called old style. Um, there are um, I believe 96 of them, and the and they start corresponding to something. But even then, I mean, I live in the city. I don't live in the community or anything like that. And even when so, and yes, I say this partly because I live near the tri point between Kreuzberg, Friedrichshain, and Meta. But even when I lived in Neukölln, I lived in the middle of Neukölln. I mean, I mean, it wasn't a question where, where I was living, and yet, um, where was I playing board games? Yes, sometimes in Neukölln but also in Friedrichshain, also in Meta. Um, we're also going to queer meetups. Again, Neukölln, but also Schöneberg and Prenzlauer Berg and Wedding um, and Friedrichshain. Um, and so the, um, so, so the, so it's almost like, a, it's almost like a pan center city, um, identity, I think, at this point. So there, there's actually, so especially if you ask people, um, I, I think in terms of real estate also, the, the kind of big distinction is the ring. So um, people talk about the Berlin inside the ring and outside the ring uh, all the time. Um, and, and, and I mean, yes, I guess I guess there's a thickness to it because, for example, if you're just north of the ring and if you're just south of the ring, you're probably using the same train station. Um, but essentially, once you're the nearest train station to you is not um, uh, is not in zone A. So zone A is all of the ring and everything inside the ring. It's not like London. So in, so in London, the zones have there are stations that are in multiple zones, and then the station will be in whichever zone is more convenient for you, fairwise. For example, zone one or zone two, or it could be zone two or zone three. Here, it's not like that. Here, the ring is zone A. So um, you pay extra traveling from the suburbs to the ring. You, you don't get a discount for traveling to the ring only if you're traveling exclusively outside the ring. And of course, you can't travel from one suburb on one side of the ring to another purely by S-Bahn because, um, um, because there are no connections. I mean, there are connections that are on the ring, but again, the ring is in the ring. Um, so... Um, so, so again, there is this kind of, I guess, zone A versus zone B identity, and it's absolutely a thing. But there's no sense of zone A as a governing thing in which I can, I can vote. I mean, the upcoming election um, in about a month, there's a federal election in which I know how to vote. 
um, there's a city election, which they're also less certain, but I'm pretty sure I know how to vote. And, then, and But I have no idea how to vote in the Bethesda election. Um, because, yes, I technically live in Meta, but I, I mean, it's not important. I mean, but not a terribly important thing to me. Um, there's a boundary. Um, and I, again, socializing people with people in so many Bethesda, I mean, it's not like we constantly talk just about Meta. We talk about Berlin. We talk about Germany. Um, and this is actually a big situation. It's actually a big problem with NIMBYism because NIMBYism lives on these kind of very local, very rooted identities, but rooted, again, not in a city subculture. Like in my case, it would be the gamer subculture or um, the subculture of um, trans and non-binary people because we live all over and we have meetups. Again, usually in the center, but people commute from all over. Um, whereas the NIMBYs, let's say, um, like around, I don't know, Kreuzberg, let's say there are people who think of themselves as Kreuzberg, or maybe a specific part of Kreuzberg, which is called Kreuzberg. It's an unusual neighborhood with two very distinct centers, which are um, which are Koti, which uh, this is a much poorer one, and uh, Meringdam, the slash Halashistol, and like, especially in the northern end here, it's basically Mitte that is legally in Kreuzberg, but it's central business district, and even here, it's clearly not the central business district, but this is very middle class. Um, and Koti is very not middle class. Um, and, but, um, but my point is that if all you do is you, you socialize within a, within a zone like this, then, um, yeah, you're probably going to know, um, you, you're going to socialize maybe with people who are also in the zone, then you think that people who socialize outside are maybe interlopers. Um, and, and usually if you've just moved to the city, you don't, you're not rooted in a neighborhood, you're rooted in a city, you probably move to the city to work for someone else. Um, and so you have coworkers that are going to be from all over. Now, I'm in a very weird situation in which I work from home, so my coworkers live in New York. Hi, Huri. Um, so my coworkers live in New York, but um, when I socialize, I socialize with people who work again all over, probably more in tech than the average because tech hires in English. But please don't take this as an assertion that my social group is exclusively middle class. It really isn't. Again, when you know this many trans and non-binary people, I mean, that's not a thing that happens. I mean, I also know way more sex workers here than um, is average. Um, and so these people, so, so, so these people that I know live all over. Um, and again, other people often mostly move to the city. Or again, not, not everyone, I mean, but, but very few are born Berliners. Um, and the, so, so when we think of new housing, I mean, it's not, I mean, so often new housing is for us on the margins or it's perceived as for us on the margins. Um, and, and this is, I guess, where a lot of localism and nimbyism come into play. Um, and not for nothing. So, so leaving Germany for a moment, so in California, um, think about this. California almost passed a law called SB50, which forcibly upzones most of the urban and inner suburban parts of the state. Um, so uh, over local objections. The person who passed this law, again, the law did not pass, but the person who, sorry, not passed, who introduced this law, his name is State Senator Scott Wiener. Um, he is essentially the political leader, this guy. Uh, he is essentially the political leader of American NIMBYism. Not NIMBYism, sorry. He's the political leader of American YIMBYism. Um, he is within San Francisco considered a moderate, um, although much of it comes out of political bribery um, that he did not, or political field that he did not, that he did not pay to certain Swadis on leftists in, in San Francisco. Like if you look at, I mean, we're talking about someone whose actual signature laws that passed other than the housing bills are things about trans rights. Uh, and the, uh, he, he's not trans, he's cis guy. And at any rate, he represents San Francisco. There was a primary challenge to him from the left um, by someone named Jackie Felder. 
Um, the primary challenge specifically was about housing, was someone was very rooted in uh, um, in the Sunrise Movement, so far left climate activism, and the challenge failed. And so, so San Francisco, when it gets to vote in state elections, votes for Yambiism. And you would think, oh, okay, yeah, so San Francisco is a Yambi city, it probably has Yambi zoning, right? And it even has a mayor who ideas as a Yambi. But no, actually, San Francisco does not have Yambi zoning. San Francisco, the, ma the majority of San Francisco's land is zoned single family, which SB 50 would forcibly upzone to, I believe, four story zoning. It, 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 it was supposed to be seven story zoning and kept getting called back in various compromises. Um, and so, the because San Francisco has a city council called the Board of Supervisors, and they're rooted locally, and the locals think differently. The locals are, for example, homeowners. Here it's less so. We have lower home ownership rate, I believe, than San Francisco. In Berlin, it's, I think, something like 15% home ownership. Um, so for us, the people who hate new housing and don't care are mostly people who are either under control um, or get weird below market housing that is not rent control. So we have, uh, so so if I look for housing, I look on this. Like, um, this is how I look for housing. Um, it's a site, but over here, you're getting market rate housing. This is like, this is a website that's kind of general market and you can get cheaper housing if you know someone. This is not that common in Berlin. It exists. I mean, from time to time I hear of someone who it's very middle class and still managed to find rent for 400 euros off. But but it's very rare, relatively speaking. Usually people pay what I pay per square meter. Um, within within the ring, obviously, if you go in, if you go to Maltan, you pay less. Thankfully, I don't live in Maltan. Um, and um, but this is something that's actually more common in the United States. The you know a guy. Um, so so American housing markets are um, more opaque this way. Um, but, if we, but here we have some opacities, and if it's someone who benefits from such an opacity and, let's say, likes a uh, and likes a local landlord who's been in the city since forever and doesn't know or care that the market rate is three times as high and doesn't think and like and sold out personal relationships, because again, these are the people who socialize locally. It's the the la this landlord has been in the city, who, 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 this landlord was in their seventies and and was born in either West Berlin or East Berlin. Um, and so the, and it's not going to be an anonymous corporation like Deutsche Wohnen, which knows what the market rate is and will set the rent to the market rate. Um, hence Deutsche Wohnen and Tegnen, people who are trying to seize Deutsche Wohnen, which builds housing, but or they're only trying to seize the private housing of big companies that build housing like Deutsche Wohnen and not small landlords that build nothing because small landlords are their friends. Um, and this is, and, and all of the analysis goes into this, so people are so people are complaining about gentrification, but these are, again, these are white white neighborhoods. All of these neighborhoods that I know, these, again, these are Baterka, um, so not white neighborhoods. Um, they sometimes look at Altstein here. Um, so um, here, so, so starting here, you can see uh, populations by outside, and then you, if you go to past years, you can see past year populations, and they have general, and this is genpop, and after you get genpop, you get um, just people with migration background. Um, so for example, it's like Zundwohnen, um, that's what, 6269, way... Nine three, what is it? Nine three eight six three. So Gesundheit, I believe this is the mo I believe this is the highest number. Sixty four percent of Gesundheit is people with migration background. Um, vetting is also high, I believe. Uh, Neukölln, the not the not, not Neukölln, the the which 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 also includes farther out places, but Neukölln, the outside. Um, is, is also high. I think it's also in the 60s. Uh, and all of these proportions are rising. So um, there's white flight here and uh, entry of uh, immigrants. And it's immigrants of all social classes. 
um, immigrants of all racial backgrounds. So for example, I am a white immigrant. Um, I, I see quite a lot of white immigrants. I'm American, a few Israeli, um, many Eastern European, some Western European, but also lots of non-Western immigrants. So lots and lots and lots of Middle Easterners, um, Asians, very few Africans. They, they exist, but there are very few black people. And um, there's no real sense in, so, so even though you can actually track this if you really care, so this isn't bad. So, so this is bad that it will not tell you the population uh, by old style and where the migration background is from. It will just say where they're without migration background. But the data exists. I, I think it even exists a further down, the farther down level than uh, than um, old style. I think it gets down to, I think, the Keats level. So, so that's only a couple of blocks. Um, but it's not a headline information, so it's not used very much in analysis. And unfortunately, th this leads to incorrect social analysis. And here's an example of this incorrect social analysis that comes, again, from this kind of race blindness where they're complaining. So, so, th so here's the paper to look for. It's called Inner City Suburbanization, which complains about middle class, about housing that is marketed to the middle class. So, so the complaints here are mostly about marketing. Um, and they have the, and they have this diff weird definition of urbanization versus suburbanism, um, which I find rather strange because, for example, they talk about um, automobile dependence as a feature of suburbanism, which I think is correct. But in Berlin, um, the model shift is in the last decade or so, so from between the 2008 and 2017 surface of mobility in Deutschland the shift has been toward more use of public transportation and less automobile dependence. And moreover, the gentrifiers tend to vote for the Green Party. Um, the Green Party um, is not necessarily good on building, U uh, on building subways or building s bahn trains, but it closed back space from cars to give to bikes, um, almost to the point that bikes are very associated with hipsterism. And um, so, or they talk about, or they talk about things like, um, power that urbanism is more politically influential than suburbanism, which if you're rooted in the history of American suburbanization, this looks, um, unrecognizable, but I think it's also unrecognizable in Germany to some extent, because here in Berlin, we have Wannsee. Um, now I grew up learning about Wannsee just because of the Wannsee conference house, uh, where the... Um, here, here. Um, where the decision on the final solution was being undertaken. And uh, the, there were 15, this was 15 people led, um, uh, led by Heydrich, by, by Reinhard um, Heydrich. Uh, um, I think half of them survived the war and a few, and, um, and a few of them actually had careers after the war, like unrepentant. But um, but at any rate, um, so you can kind of see just on Google Earth what the land use here is. So it's so, so they like the lake, um, lots lots of um, lots of little boats on the lake, um, single family houses, and, and and this is an old suburb. So the meeting was held in this area in, 19, in, in 1942 because um, the German elite lived here. And why did it live here? Because it was an early example of suburbanization. People perceived the city, I mean, it, it was within city limits after 1920, but even though, even though people perceived the more urban parts of the city as dirty, working class, grimy, so they looked for suburban living just as in the United States. Um, now, I will say that it's less so than in the United States. Um, in continental Europe, we had much more of a model of urban middle class living than in Britain or the United States. Um, so, for example, the idea that in the, in the idea that you live in an apartment um, is not traditional to Britain at all. There's this whole gentlemen don't live on shelves. Sorry, gentlemen don't live on shelves attitude. So they live in row houses in London. Uh, so the idea is that you have your narrow little house with multiple floors. 
that opens directly the street. Over here, if you have multiple floors in your apartment, that's a sign of fabulous wealth. Um, so here, more common, you, uh, so, so if you're just, you know, random middle to upper middle class schlub, you get an apartment that is on a single floor, probably somewhere between two and, I don't know, traditionally I would say two and four, but the bigger buildings go well above four, two, two and four. And um, then there's a shared corridor, shared staircase. Um, so, um, but there was also the suburban model. And again, this was not a model that's far from power, on the contrary. Um, this was a model of power. In fact, um, the reason that um, S1, the, the uh, S1 line of the S1 is like this, um, very, so it's a very busy line, um, is because there was early, so I believe this was the first to be suburb, to, not to be, I believe this was the first line to be electrified outside the ring and the core of the Stadtbahn. And the reason this is so is because it had very high ridership because it already had all these nine to five commuters in the 1920s. Um, so when they um, built the north-south tunnel, they paired the strongest line to the south, which is the Wannseebahn, with the strongest line to the north, which is um, to Anienburg, and this is F1. Um, so they've been permanently connected um, since this opened, which was right at the start of the war. And um, the uh, and, and, and by the way, both of these were in the West, so it's continued in uh, even post-war. Um, so there's this idea that um, suburban living is far from power. We definitely suburban populists complain constantly about being far from power and about having decisions being made for them by the urban elite. I mean, cars have not been banned. The urban elite is not making decisions for you. I'm sorry. It's, um, uh, rather, I'm not sorry. Um, but but certainly, but certainly there's a lot of this kind of populism, very cheap new right populism, in which people who are who have it good still complain. And um, the um, so so first of all, they're talking about this urban versus suburban dichotomy that I don't think is correct. But more importantly, if you read the rest of the paper, they're complaining specifically about middle class enclaves. So um, and the examples they give are. Um, in, so they give Dor examples from Dortmund that they know that they don't know, but they talk about, um, but they talk about Berlin, about Prenzlau and they talk about, wait, uh, so they talk about things like uh, about the Prenzlau and um, and they talk about uh, various, um, and they talk about various yuppie things in Berlin, which are. And, and I mean, if you look at where Prenzlau is, that's like right next to a public park. That's that, that's not any kind of privatization of public space. That's relying on the commons, relying on the public. I mean, yes, it's people who also don't, who don't think that you should have uh, um, New York levels of honking right in front of your house at all times of day and all times of night. That is not an enclave. That's just better environment. It's, it's like asking to reduce air pollution levels or to reduce water pollution levels. And the reason these kind of false ideas about gentrification propagate is because they are race blind. They don't look at the way that the city is becoming more diverse. Or if they do, they think about this very subconsciously. And um, and because this is and, and because the German elite, especially the political elite, is very not racially diverse, they're not used to seeing immigrants. Or rather, they're not used to seeing immigrants as subjects, but as objects. They're not used to seeing people of color as subjects rather than objects. And so they can constantly talk about how certain neighborhoods that are diversifying um, are getting worse because from their perspective, if a place that make if a beer garden and, a, uh, and, and, a, and an imbis get replaced by dinner kebab and, and a shisha bar, then they feel less comfortable and nobody calls them racist because not because they're not racist, but because they are, no, they never associate with people of color or with immigrants who are at their social level. I mean, sure. I mean, the, the, they maybe go, maybe they get dinner kebab all the time. And it's not like the person at the dinner kebab is going to call you racist. Um, 
So because there's never this kind of interaction with someone who is at their social level and can tell them, stop it, you're racist, this kind of race-blind crypto racism propagates. And this is where a lot of the anti gentrification mentality in Berlin comes from. And I promised that I was going to talk about um, redevelopment in Berlin, I am. And I'm bringing all of this up as a way of leading out to a place called Kathy. Um, so actually, I live pretty close. Um, and, and it brings us up. So this is Kathy, and there's even a link on Google. Um, this is, these are squatters. So the wall was right here. So this, the reason this is a white street is because the wall was here. Um, and uh, you would think west-east, but no, actually here. It's an unusual case in which it's east-west. Um, and you can maybe get that in a sense, because here the buildings are more normal for Berlin, so uh, um, buildings haunting the streets with wings in the back. And um, and it's not complete because, I mean, there are, there are abandoned places, and this is um, formerly industrial. Um, but, um, but you can kind of see this is kind of more normal city housing, and here, it's, I mean, you can see some of that, but Less so, especially here, because this was so close to the wall that this was just a death zone. So yeah, so there's re so these, so things like this exist, but this is new development. These are new developments. Um, there's a building that I just saw being built. I think it's this one. So it's not. I don't think it's seen in Google, but you can see the foundations. This is coming up. This is new development. Um, and so um, and here. At least it looks like they're doing new development. Um, but where they don't, it's much more abandoned because this is this was no man's land. Here it's just people who colonize this area and this gave copy. And I've passed by copy. I've never been inside copy, so there are, I believe, so Wikipedia says there are 50 people in this building, which is Unlike, for example, favela buildings, where the favela, where, where the squatters build the buildings, they maintain the buildings. This is, I mean, they just came in, and the state of the place is, is a total loss. I mean, you probably need to knock it down. And there are the people in the copy, uh, in, in the wagon plots, so people in caravans. Um, I believe it's 50 and 50 uh, in the caravans. And um, I've walked by, and I don't think I've ever seen a person of color go in or out. Um, again, I haven't gone in. Um, I, I just walked by a lot, and I, and I see all their signs, things like uh, if you try to uh, touch us, the city will burn. All, all these violent, all, all these violence threats that you know they're not actually going to do. Like if the state actually, to, um, if the state actually finds a developer who um, is actually a developer, not some two-bit person trying to buy land for cheap, knowing that nobody has title to it. Um, and, 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 then, and then pass the buck along or something, then, I mean, yeah, they'll throw rocks at the buses and then go away. And um, so, so, all these, um, so, so all these threats, and, the, and they've never seen a person of color going around. Now, I want to make it very clear that they, is this person white or not meter in Berlin is not perfect. Um, remember, our non-white population is predominantly Middle Eastern. Um, these are squatters from the 90s when this would have been even tour. Um, the, so, so I believe in the 1990s, if you're in Berlin and you're not white or Middle Eastern, you're Vietnamese and then you have housing in East Berlin, you don't need to squat in, um, and you don't need to come from the West to squat. Um, and so um, my ability to tell a Turk apart from, a, from an Aryan German is not perfect, but it's also not zero. So... Take it with some grain of salt when I'm saying I've never seen a person of color at Kathy, but um, don't dismiss this. Um, and, uh, and I will say, by the way, um, far left spaces or, or, um, or, or left wing queer spaces that I have been inside and talked to people and where they're from, where they're from. It's not that I'm missing a Turk or something. No, they're all European. Um, and so, in contrast, I used to look at the names on the buildings of the uh, the names on the mailboxes of the newer buildings, the ones that are typically called gentrification buildings on them top, but are really the exact opposite because more housing means rents are going to be lower. 
Um, and my building, for example, is the, the names out of 22 apartments, seven have names of non-European origin, and I'm not including myself. So Asian names, Middle Eastern names. Um, and the I, America, by the way, is basically Europe. For the purposes of this discussion, so there is this complete indifference to to this. In as far as I can tell, all of social sciences in Europe, um, I, I, I've seen far too much political analysis that somehow believes that the center left is too anti-racist, which boggles the mind given that you know, given how they treat refugees, for example, and um, the. Uh, if, if, I mean, I, I call it short pill. They're, they're very short pill and they don't mean it in a positive way. Um, I also don't know who David Torres is, but they came to the same conclusion, which is we need to be more racist. And um, the um, and, and again, it boils down to the fact that they don't know that they, they don't know people of color very much. They're um, not so. Um, they're not. Or, or if they do, it's people who will never tell them, stop it. And you, and you, and you can see the result. And, um, and so this is where it's coming from, and this is where we were seeing so much left in MBS, and it's people who are racist without knowing it. People who strongly ID as anti-racist and, say, and, and then don't like talking about politics um, when I talk about immigration or do talk about politics, but only in the let's throw rocks at Manuel Macron type way, rather than anything that's actually productive about immigrant rights. Um, and again, it's something that I notice very much when I compare the queer community with, let's say, less political, but actually much more politically aware um, gamers. Um, and so this is so this is where the left nimbyism, nimbyism comes from. This is where the idea that um, turning this, for example, into a beautiful new condo, or that, for that matter, turning this into a beautiful new condo. Way more than, there's three for way more than 100 people here. I mean, the, I mean, you, um, I, I mean, let, let's look at the, the, let's look polygons for a moment. Um, so I believe this building is also a total loss, but let's just do the core part of this. So. And this building is also, by the way, these are also abandoned. But um, if you just start with this region, this is 6.7 thousand. Usually you build on half to two thirds. Um, depends on, so this would be maybe more like two thirds, but, um, and then things like this, from which the wings have been removed, might even be one third. Um, or, or, or these, um, I'm pretty sure are comic blocks. Um, but if you do two thirds, um, two lengths, and let's round down for a bit, and it's usually going to be seven floors. Um, average space per capita in Berlin is about 45. Yeah, this is how many people could live here. Um, and I mean, yeah, the there roundings are not always against me, but I mean, 500 is still going to be pretty easy. Um, and the actual population is 100. And um, and this is not colon walled city in my back in my backyard. This is not KW Sandy. This is mid right. This is the same stuff that's all over the city. Um, and likewise, here, hundreds of people could live here. Um, if they get if they ever get to redeveloping this. Um, this is, I think this is a car, one of these is a car, is an auto repair shop, I don't remember which. Um, so, maybe next to the river, don't put the auto repair shop. Like, we're talking about, uh, this is where we talk about Afghan refugees, so there are 5 million potential refugees. Um, a fraction of them will get out of Afghanistan because everyone's gotten short filled, even though the lessons of 2015 are the exact opposite. Immigration is popular. Yes, some agree with Nazis don't like it. Yes, some people are going to make up social problems. Um, let results be your 
judge. Um, so if, if in Germany we take 1% of the population, which is what we took in 2015, um, in theory, Berlin is 37,000 of this because 1% of Berlin's population. Berlin is a little less, is actually a little bit poorer than Germany. Um, so Munich would probably take much more than its share, but Berlin could also take more than its share. Let's say Berlin is taking 50K. Um, so we need housing for 50K people. Um, and I just showed you how Kepi alone is net 500. Um, and that's without other total loft buildings. With, um, so this is already being developed. Um, this looks like it's under construction. This is too far, by the way. Um, this Here I'm relying on Google Earth for this one because I, you can see, this is the street. So I walk on the street and I see what's from the street. So I see this, I see this. I don't see this. Um, so this looks like it's under construction. Um, but, and these look like they've just been graded and they will start soon, maybe. So it looks like this. Um, this is probably another 500, 600, 700 people. And if you go taller, which you absolutely should next to the river, then you get more. And when you hop the river, so here's the thing. Technically, this is Meta and this is Fredo's time. In practice, this is more central because this is kind of awkwardly tucked between different, between different train stations. And this is a train station. In fact, a train station with intercity trains. I don't think there should be intercity trains at Postbanov because I think that Maybe, or maybe a handful going to Warsaw or something, because I think that, again, other than Warsaw and stuff, basically everything going to Hauptbahnhof should feed the north-south main line, which has way more space than the Stadtbahn. It's also way faster than the Stadtbahn. The Stadtbahn should be used either for the s or for express s trains, like branching out as like in Alban. But regardless, this is a big train station. There's like easy access to jobs here. Also, um, buildings being built. Um, and so Friedrichsland is also an eastern neighborhood, but um, it has some squatters that got title. Um, Kepi, I think, is unique or almost unique in that the squatters did not get entitled or evicted. Um, but squats were common in Friedrichsland and Panzerlauerbach. And um, in Friedrichsland, apparently, so, so my understanding is that a lot of programmers live in Friedrichsland. So the um, so the tech jobs are kind of migrating in this direction, um, which is which is actually not an imbalance; it's a balance because jobs migrated to um, the zoo during division because Meta was in the east. So West Berlin built this as its city center around Kostostendam, and now the jobs. First of all, the jobs start coming back to Meta, and second, sometimes they overshoot to further line. But again, programmers live here. It's not like they're going to further sign for shits and giggles. And so, um, it's, it's, so my point is that Vachta, Vachta, and uh, uh, Spanov are very good places for redevelopment. They're also in the east, so lots of industry that stayed, or, or warehousing that stayed in a central location well past its sell by date. Um, for example, this, I mean, Nothing against big box stores, but there should be you know, several tens of floors of housing. Also, um, above this, also, what the hell is the parking doing right next to Osman House? Um, when you want to do a park, that's fine, but please don't insult us by putting parking right next to Osman House. Um, and speaking of, um, so this is the station building. Um, this is parking. This is just a parking garage. Just, no, there's a climate crisis. This should be, I mean, Berlin thinks that everything more than seven floors is the end of the city, but objectively speaking, it's not. Objectively speaking, this strip of 3,000 square meters. So, so it's not, and maybe it's not the best size for it because let's say 3,000 is more like 30. So you can't do 30 as one, Going. I mean, another one like this one strand, it's probably two. So it's 30 by 90. And if you overbuild here, um, it's, so again, it's kind of awkward. You can't build. So 30 by 90 is annoying. You can do a rubber of 20. 
by 90? Um, 20 is thicker than usual, but if there's nothing else, then it's fine. Um, it's going to be maybe slightly bigger apartments. Um, but again, that's fine. It's common actually in wealthier areas to build slightly thicker buildings for bigger apartments. Um, there are some examples in Western Paris. Um, and it's very common in American condos, so whatever, just do it. So if it's 20 by 90, so 1,800 in actual use. Um, you usually got 85% efficiency out of the high rise. And then, let's say, 30 floors. Yeah, that's 1,000 people. Um, just literally facing all spots. And, and you can kind of see how, you know, one parking lot at a time, forgetting redeveloping existing building, one parking lot at a time, we're hitting 50,000. Um, and we're not hitting 50,000 citywide, we're hitting 50,000 walking distance from where I live. This is how much space there is in Berlin for more development. Um, and again, or, or here, uh, or here, if you convert the head effect to something that, um, again, could have the head effect in the basement or something, but please, more housing. Um, or here in the park, or here in the parking. Um, um, probably the rail yard should maybe not be in Valshaw Um This is, I believe, where they're building the Amazon building, the IG site. The one that people, the one, it, it, it gets weird. I talk about the, about the Amazon building from the time, people say, oh, that's gentrification. say, I like jobs. And there's an awkward silence. Um, or rather, when I talk to white queers, there's an awkward violence. When I talk to people of color, when I talk to, I don't want to say people of color because it's not just the people of color, it's a diverse community. So when I, when I talk to more racially diverse gamers and they say, oh, it's evil, but yeah, it's jobs. Um, again, people who don't, well, people who think in more forward thinking terms than feeling guilty for things that happened 80, years ago and then speaking over the descendants of their victims. Um, don't take jobs, don't don't take development. And um again over here again parking, make the make this like this please. We're 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 very quickly doing and and, and by the way here I don't know if here is going to be redevelopment, but there's development here. I uh, actually recently shot a video out of this, and you can see, I guess, these are the buildings where, that are under construction. Um, this, oh my god, is Google Earth giving me a shot? This building, my point is, uh, well, this looks like something that will be a building soon. Yes, the answer is yes, Google Earth is being non cooperative um, The solution is to restart. It's like Windows 98. Sorry for the boomer reference to Windows 98, but every boomer who, who grew up around a computer knows what Windows 98 represents. Um, thankfully, as with Windows 98, one restart fixes everything. Um, so anyway, the point is that housing is being built and office development is being built in Toyota sign. Um, it's just that more is needed and faster is needed. And you also need not just infrastructure sign, but also everywhere else that is near the Uban and that one. By the way, this location, I mean, you get that it's a park that it's not really useful as a park because there's no tree cover, so it's sweltering. Um, so over here, they're trying to build, I believe, 12,000 housing units, I think. This bit is for the right is for the greens are against. This is why I'm probably going to vote SPD in the city election rather than green, which is what I'm voting in the federal election, almost certainly. Um, it's not like that. Like, I, I hate the SPD leader. Something's okay, fire. She's a plagiarist. She's politically bad. She had to resign. Oh, hey, thanks, Franca. She had to resign from uh, a federal ministry as a result of the scandal, but for some reason she was not dropped. Speaking of um, crypto racism, 
Uh, at this point, the number two of SPD in Berlin is someone named Raid Saleh, who I'm pretty sure is not the mayoral candidate because his name is Raid Saleh, um, rather than, let's say, Francisco Giffey or, or any other very you know, Aryan name. Uh, and um, the, so, in, so anyway, SPD is proposing 12,000 housing units. Useless wants them to be social housing, but I mean, everyone understands that market rate is better than nothing. Um, I mean, it's also the market rate is better than social housing, but social housing costs the city money that should be going to schools and the uh, um, and market rate housing costs nothing and generates tax money, but that's a separate issue. Um, so, but this is maybe, this is a good location, not the best location, because you probably need to also, you, you, you probably need to infill on the ring, and then you're on the ring, and you're not on a radio. But, I mean, it's not amazing, but it's also not terrible. There's lots of space here. Um, but you really want smaller sizes. This is where I keep talking about kind of the remains of the wall ribbon. So, so the reason there's a lot of very developable space here is that, not here, here, is that right next to the wall, there was, a de there was the literal death strip. So there was a lot of clearance, and so now that it's being reclaimed, it's a good site for redevelopment. So it's again, it's usually these eastern sites that either never under that never moved up the value chain from traditional heavy industry as communism didn't, um, and where so in London and Paris, these rail yards might still exist, but they might well be turned into something else. Um, so actually in Paris, there's, and I'm not saying Paris has removed the railroad, it's quite to the contrary, but it's done some of that. So let's go to Paris for a sec. This does not require us to spend eight hours on a train over Earth. And so you can see the cache, even without the, okay, so now you can see the rail. Um, so, so you can see the cache and how wide this is, but even so, parts of it are redeveloped. Um, this used to be even more of a gash, and yes, they're slowly clawing this back and doing development in Bell C. Um, so, for example, so, so Bell C, so um, the um, government, uh, uh, so, so, so big site for government jobs, um, this is POD over the old radar. Um, and again, they should do more. For example, this is an auto, this is for night trains and auto trains, just no. Um, and um, or, or here, um, and if you think this might be necessary for freight, this is France. What freight? Um, so, um, so again, there's some stuff to be done, but some of it was done in the West, um, which of course Paris was Western, and London even more so. Actually, the term gentrification, um, the original citation for the term is from London, and specifically from Islington, specifically when um, the rail yards. Um, for good strains, uh, got redeveloped because there was no longer need for massive coal haulage into the city. Um, so all of this is post-war TOD, um, before the term TOD existed. And um, this was called, uh, and, and this was called um, gentrification, um, i.e., the gentry replacing the working class, except it was not actually gentry, it was the middle class. But, um, and it's not, and it wasn't replacement in the sense of any kind of displacement, it was replacement in the sense that the working class got nicer housing in the suburbs, but which is where most people wanted to live. Um, but, um, but in Berlin, um, in the East, this process is only not, is happening, I'm not saying it's not happening, it's happening, but later because, um, the East just held on to like communist ideas of planning, which were stuck in the early to mid twentieth century, well past their sell by date. Um, so it's not a good thing that we have redevelopable land. All this should have been buildings, but also communism shouldn't have existed. And um, and the bottom line is there's so you can kind of say that these are not, this is rather industrial, and some of these. So, so, and some of these are maybe used as clubs. Um, let me actually check where Belgheim So actually, I wanted to check where Belgheim is because so I've never been to any of the clubs here, but um, they were kind of famous. Okay, so this is Belgheim. Um, so I think that so the famous ones are Belgheim, which is this, 
and pick cut, which is right here. Um, and uh, and here they even say this is a Corona test center. Um, and so, so some so sometimes the owners of these clubs have like become neighborhood luminaries or something, and, and then they complain that uh, a developer keeps offering them money um, to turn this into high-end housing or office space. Um, except that, yeah, sure, you can do that, but then you can move. I mean, these I mean, clubs move all the time. Event spaces move all the time. And so I'm less worried about a specific community space because, again, the end of the day, real estate space is real space space. Um, and so this also probably should be taller buildings, housing or office, or both, to be honest. Um, or here, um, also this curve, but that, for that you'll need to watch my video about why I don't like this curve in, um, in particular, um, and what should come in, in, what should come instead of this curve. Um, Oskoitz, in general, Oskoitz is underdeveloped. Um, not sure why. I mean, it was Eastern, but many things were Eastern. Uh, it's just a very good site for access to the Stadtbahn and the uh, and the Ring. But for example, this is still empty. Um, I think just, so. So this is a very fast and pedestrian hostile road, but it's Berlin pedestrian hostile, not even non-urban Germany pedestrian hostile, let alone American pedestrian hostile, so I don't know. Um, but again, you can, you know, a thousand people by a thousand people just build housing, and Berlin is building 20,000 housing units a year, so for, um, not 20,000, slightly fewer than 20,000, maybe 18,000. So that's for maybe 40,000 people, and it should be doing more, it should be aiming for let's say 30,000. I mean, if a slice of New York, the population of Berlin should be building 45 or 50,000 housing units, so for 100,000 people a year. Berlin, is, again, is a poorer city than New York around for that. Um, so if you try to build per capita like Tokyo, so that would be, or Seoul, so that would be 40,000 housing units, 80,000 people a year. You can do that, but I don't think you can do it for long before the market cools and there's no longer any incentive to do so. Um, you can do it for a few years, but developers think longer because it takes longer to recoup housing costs to rent. And, um, and so, but, but something like 30,000 housing units a year, so 60-ish thousand people, maybe 70,000 if the units are slightly bigger. Um, but that shouldn't be a problem indefinitely. Um, eventually you run out of space that's mid-rise in the ring, so either you anticipate and go high-rise, which is what I think they're trying to do here, or you replace the buildings, or you start going at judiciously chosen sites outside the ring, so things where you are where you have very good access, where you're outside the ring, but you have very good access. Um, so for example, they're sometimes talking about redeveloping Tego. Um, I think it's up in the air, but they're talking about it. Um, um, what else? This side. This is the side that bothers me most. Um, these are single-family houses with gardens, and this is technically outside the ring, but it is still in the trunk. Bonhomme is still the trunk of the north. Uh, that feeds into the north-south tunnel. It's not the north-south tunnel because the tunnel starts farther south, but all of the space. Look, um, and this is also far enough that it should be just housing and not. Um, there should be housing and not what's it called um, in our office. Gesundbrunnen should be office. Gesundbrunnen is a high speed train station. Um, and should be more high speed trains because stuff should be moving um, to the north south main line and away from the Stadtbahn. So let's go here. So yeah, just this bit. Um, 17, uh, not 17, one point. No, 17, 17 hectares. Um, I, I mean, normal density even here is something like 50,000 per square kilometer. I mean, this is, look, 170,000 square meters. Um, let's say get you developed just to build only on half. Um, Second floors. 
about 10,000 people, 11,000 people. Um, you can go even more than 50,000 for sort of um, if, if you build like this, um, which you should. Housing in Berlin is valuable. Um, and again, it's not just one side of Bonholmer Straße. Um, you do this side of Bonholmer Straße. Uh, this is a bigger building, so we're going to go around it. No sense in redeveloping what's already developed. Here we see the transition between mid drives and single family. This is another, if that is 11,000, this is probably seven or 8,000, and this is gonna, okay. so yeah, all the, this site entirely, this entire site is 20,000, easy. Um, and then you have extra from um, taking the mall and taking the car front and putting buildings on top of them, um, that which probably should generate more housing, I guess. No, not more housing, very more office space and housing. So again, this is also a series I'm very familiar with. Um, there are co-working spaces here. The only reason I'm not using them is because they're expensive. Um, and so the, the kind of, you can even sometimes see a, um, like the occasional high rise. So this is, uh, and here there's a Lidl. Yes, because these buildings are kind of like this, it's not easy to build something on top of the Lidl, or maybe. Um, so there's space. I mean, again, it's not infinite space, but there's space for quite a lot. And so this is not something that Berlin should be afraid of. Um, does Berlin have some Kleingarten on prime real estate just outside the city center? Um, do you mean these? Do you mean, do you mean these houses? Um, or do you mean um, the, the other part that I saw that uh, would floored me is this. So this is outside the ring. Um, this is this is really called the Kleingarten uh, colony. Um, this is, again, it's outside the ring and not that convenient. But again, but you can but you can walk on Schwandau Dam. You can uh, walk to U2. Um, if you really want, you can walk through stuff that feeds the Stadtbahn. Um, this train station uh, today has an S-Bahn train to city center every 10 minutes. Um, so this is also a rather strong location. Again, maybe not the most in demand. So somewhere here, there's this gradation from Charlottenburg slash West End, which is a rich area. And this is a rich area. This looked like a rich area when I visited to Spandau, which is not a rich area. So I don't know where the demand falls, but I believe that here it might still be high enough that you absolutely can do those things that are called the suburb in the city and, and other euphemisms for I don't like seeing more development that is capitalist in the 21st century. Um, so I don't know what they're zoned for. So I've never seen a zoning map for Berlin. Um, so I don't know if, for example, it has the thing that New York does. Uh, where, where, I don't know if Berlin does the thing New York does where the um, where some buildings are non-compliant, i.e. the entire neighborhood was downzoned to less density than is there, so that the buildings, so that you could not build the same buildings that exist there today. It was a thing that Jane Jacobs favored, and the idea that there should be buildings of a variety of sizes, that was her excuse. And she predicted that neighborhoods that were built taller, like the Upper West Side, would become high-rise slums. And uh, that the Upper East Side would also decline because even the rich get bored. Uh, goes without saying either prediction came to pass. This has not deterred consumption theorists from quoting Green Jacobs as if she was right about things. Um, at any rate, so this is something that probably should be not crime, uh, not crime Gautam, but I can see, but I can see why this is not as strong of a location. Um, I mean, even here, so for, uh, first of all, there is more space between the building. Um, Spandau El Dam specifically needs a giant road diet. Um, it's, 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 the, the car traffic here is very fast and very noisy. Um, and, um, but I guess the people here like it. This is 
these people vote vote Ted Devil, by the way. And these people think cars are good. Um, but eventually they do it white flag. I mean, it's a, I mean, if in Munich we're seeing white flag, this is the this is the link that I could not. Oh, thanks, sorry. Um, this is the link that I could not find um, for Berlin. Uh, not for Berlin, for Munich. How? Um, uh, so this is Munich again. Munich, but so I'm just showing you that Munich is um, running a net population. So, so you can see that uh, more people go into Munich than go out of Munich. Um, so they don't say this by citizenship status because I couldn't. I could not find the. Um, so I could not find the link that I saw that did do that, and where it turns out that citizens are leaving and, immig and immigrants, either with or without EU citizenship, are moving to replace them, and more than enough to replace them. Uh, so you can kind of see that the saldo is positive, but um, and, and like what, but but you can also say something interesting, which is that Munich has negative. Um, migration balance with its own suburb. So the Gion 14 is the 14 uh, uh, is the 14 um, counties that are around Munich in the in the region, and then Oberbayern. Other than these, also, but much less so. And then everywhere else, Munich is running a positive net migration balance with. So people are slightly moving to Munich from the rest of the area even more so from the rest of Germany, even more so from the rest of Europe, um, and from uh, and also from Asia and Africa. Uh, and so in uh, so uh, but but there's a but there's white flight out of Munich. Munich is a very safe city, so it's not about crime, it's just that it's white flight. People who are racist and maybe Either they think of themselves as racist, which probably is the case in suburban Munich, um, or maybe they don't think of themselves as racist. They just make up other excuses where they feel uncomfortable um, around immigrants or around queer people or around minorities or around Jews who come from Israel rather than or rather than people who remain in Germany and are acculturated, um, and they think that their feelings are valid. Um, and, and people in West End will eventually be in that group as well. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, it's annoying and it's something that especially needs to be taken care of to avoid um, essentially suburbanizing, to, to avoid de-urbanizing um, jobs, to avoid de-urbanizing um, the, um, to, to avoid de-urbanizing community centers or, or cultural centers or, or political centers, um, which is something that absolutely happened in the United States. Um, we're, we're kind of like the feeling of the white flighter who is irrationally afraid of black people are treated as more valid than the feelings of a black person who wants not to be shot by cops. And um, and in Germany, by the way, I was told um, that demand for gated communities shot up after 2015, is crime up? No, crime is flat. Um, let me actually see if I can find the Germany crime survey. So Germany has crime surveys. No, I, um, this one. Germany does crime surveys every five years, um, and not every year. And unfortunately, the single crime from which for, for which the five-year thing makes the most sense, which is sexual assault, I think they stopped asking about in 2017. Um, so crime rates sometimes fall and sometimes stay the same. So um, this is one year prevalence. So um, robbery is actually up, assault is, I mean, I mean you can see the error bars there. Um, let me see if we can, uh, I think the incidence is uh, flipped. Uh, I don't want, pre I mean, if I wanted one year prevalence, I would. Okay, so this is the incidence. So, um, so robbery is up, but assault, but, but assault, which dominates violent crime, is flat. Um, and actually, if you add them, then the error bar um, is big enough, you can't see the difference. Um, so, the, so, so it's not like crime is up, it's 
not. Um, and yet people make up reasons why it is. And so um, the, the, the trick is just to make sure the racists don't end up feeling too valid um, or too validated. Um, and it's not quite about redevelopment because this is just not a great site for redevelopment just because it's not as close. I mean, Vestcoit absolutely is. So Vestcoit is extremely underdeveloped, by the way. Like, this is right next to not just the crossing between the Ring and the Stadtbahn, but also it's, I say, traditionally the, the wealthier side. It's closer to jobs, much closer to jobs um, in City West. Um, I mean, maybe at this point it's slightly harder, actually slightly harder to get from here for jobs in like Alexanderplatz and um, Friedrichstraße than from Ostkois. On the other hand, these trains going from here to here are way more crowded than these trains. Um, you can actually, this is, um, it, so, so here, if you look, so, so I talked about this in the video, um, below in the description, in the YouTube description, um, about the Uber and the S1. You can see here, there's a map of the busiest parts of the network. Um, this is a map of how busy the trains are, not how many trains there are, so how many, but how many passengers. And so this is the Stadtbahn, and you can see that it actually drops west of City West. But the number of trains stays the same. So if the trains go all the way to Vescoitz, or, um, so, or rather, two trains and three go all the way to Vescoitz. Sorry, one, um, sorry, one train, and so there are 18 trains per hour. Six go to Vescoitz six to Spandau, six to Wannsee and Potsdam. So this is very high frequency and trains that you can see are not very crowded on link. Here again, the, the, so this segment and this segment have the same frequency. Um, so this is actually a really good place for redevelopment. Uh, and uh, so this, this would be Charlottenburg West End. Um, so, and so I talked before about left-wing ambience and these are right-wing ambience. These are, again, these people who hate the left. Um, and the and look at the development here. Um, and yes, it's hemmed by trains, but by railroads. But these are electric railroads. These are not noisy trains. Um, I guess this one is elevated, but it's it, but this is a berm. It's not even a steel L that's a boombox. So it's not like this is a very noisy area. Um, so so this would also be an excellent excellent place for redevelopment. So on, on the far side, there's the park and ride and the and so much car infrastructure. Um, but over here, it's actually shielded by the railroads from A100. Um, and, and, and so this is an excellent place for high-rise development. Um, and yet, it's not happening. So you do this. Um, and yes, I'm drawing it as right next to the tracks because this is correct. This is, I mean, buildings can go right next to the tracks. They do it all the time elsewhere. Uh, so you do this. And you remember that all of this is a prime location. Probably also go here. Um, because of the S-Bahn axis. And so... You probably want to cut it around here because you don't want to build too much too close to the freeway for air quality reasons. Um, but this, this is 50,000 square meters. Um, and then add here and here and here and here. Um, and this could be high rise, not mid rise, just because of the proximity to such an important train station. I mean, this is, I mean, in all of this area, 10,000 people could live, even more if you go high rise. If you go high rise, um, and it's just unfortunately not done. There just isn't enough development here. And I, again, I, I can't tell you to, to what extent this is bad zoning and to what extent this is um, hard for developers to get capital when there's the uh, when there are posters saying David and Tigan breathing down their necks. Um, when the city makes it very clear, it will try to not so much extract service as destroy it. 
Um, it sounds like there's money being extracted, it's being spent on, again, on schools, infrastructure, um, public housing. That's not what's happening. And what is... Um, so, wait, is this the... Could it, please explain the map to me, because um, usually what I expect out of a zoning map is to see permitted density, and this is clearly not it, because this is just two colors, red and blue. At any rate, my point is there's lots and lots of developable, developable sites in Berlin, even if you believe the Euro thing that you don't redevelop small residences into big ones. Um, although, yeah, you need to redevelop the single-family homes here and here. Um, but even if you don't redevelop and just look at empty sites, they exist. And you can build pretty tall there um, at the best location. So again, your uh, Ostbahnhof is a really good location. I mean, if you're on the other side of the river, it's an okay location, not an amazing one. Um, or Vasha uh, Ostrov is also a very good location, which is why the Amazon Tower is slowly being built here. And why there's a mall right next to the station. Um, and why there's a building for uh, the offices of BASF, I believe Germany's largest chemicals manufacturer. It's based in Ludwigshafen. And uh, it shows this place as its Berlin building in uh, in Wolderskeets. So lots and lots of good locations, lots of industry that shouldn't be here, um, lot, lot, um, or post-industrial things that shouldn't be here, um, single-family houses. Oh, I have to look at, uh, click one of the buttons above the map. Um, okay. Yeah, but I mean, what will it show? Like, what's the difference between red and blue on this map? So I'm trying to see based on which blocks have no color what this map is supposed to show. Is, like, I don't think it's, I mean, is it, are colorless blocks supposed to be things that are mostly jobs? Because like, because these are very residential parts of my car, but the white one. Uh, the, my, this, the mouse icon, the mouse icon, this one. Okay. Okay. Huh. All right. Wait. There's no way this is no. There's no way this can be Fourier ratio because dots are commas and commas are dots in German. In German. Okay. All right. So this is my take on housing in Berlin. Again, you, just, you want to mostly build in central parts where there's room. Um, and again, ideally the more desirable ones, so don't just build in Treptow or something. Um, so, um, instead, build Near the main train stations, build in meta whatever you can. Voice bell, further sign. Don't just look east, also look west. I mean, Charlottenburg exists. Charlottenburg desperately needs more housing, it's expensive. In general, you want the tallest buildings to be in the most expensive neighborhoods. Because, and so, for example, this either makes it an actual plaza or put a building in here. Um, and World War II Rail is being used as a plaza, so there's actually a an open air concert here, but either makes it a place for open air concerts or put a building in here. This, this is a parking lot. Put a building in here. Um. Um. 
if these buildings are commercial and are residential, so it's easier to re replace them, just take something like this and make this 40. Is this, an, is this an Apple store? Yeah, this looks like an Apple store. Yeah, take this down, make this a 40 story building. Like this is an actually high desire, like highly desirable area. I mean, I dump on it all the time because this is straight people Berlin, but um, straight people are, are, are the majority. I, I mean, they're I mean they're valid too, right? Mark. Wait, why is this suddenly not working? Um, okay, um, I am going to look at a random spot in quite spec. Okay. And what do I do now? Link some the bounds again. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still don't think this tells me a floor area ratio. Huh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, so I think this is petering out and just identifying sites for development. So I will take questions um, if anyone has any. Um, so eight is not the hard, I want to finish this before eight, but it, eight is not the hard stop if there are lots of questions. I have a hard stop, but it is later. Um, oh, oh, there, it was low res, I mean, sure, but even, a, but it's not like there was a, a high res thing that could have been about, um, uh, that could have, I just didn't see any floor area, any floor area ratio calculation. Which, I mean, maybe I'm obsessing with this too much. I mean, I know in Paris they don't micromanage floor area ratio as much, you micromanage height. And um, so if you actually, so, so actually at one point saw a map of uh, the zoning in and around Paris and the, uh, and it, it, and it, kind of looked like there was more allowable floor area ratio in the inner suburbs in the city, which is obviously false. The built up density in the city is higher. Um, it's just in the city, it's planned somehow differently, whereas in the suburbs, it's just okay, floor area, floor area ratio is three. Uh, link to bound plan. I keep forgetting the S's. I had the same problem in English of not remembering when there is an S and when there isn't in a compound, and then it turned out that it's just a matter of British versus American usage. Like in America, you say game-based uh, physical education, and in Britain, you say games-based physical education. Okay, so... Is Grundflächenzahl? No, Grundflächenzahl is the. That's not the floor. That cannot possibly. This area cannot possibly have floor area area ratio of zero point four. So this is, is this is does this mean forty percent lot coverage? Like that you're allowed to build on forty percent of the lot? Oh, 
Baumassenzahl. Oh, Baumassenzahl. Okay, yes, I'm saying it. Yep, three. That makes sense. I mean, should be more than three, more like 12, but I mean, if all of the city were three, it would not be that bad. Um, it'd be kind of bad, but not that bad. Um, oh, okay, so the Roman, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, so why is this micromanager the point at seven, nine, seven, five, what, what, why? Um, just make everything something like XXX and move on, please. And it's not even a reference to like XXX for like the sex squads in the city, I mean, just mean 34. Yeah, Baumas and Sal, I think, is what we're looking for. Um, Yeah, yeah, that's what I, yeah, that's what I thought. It's somehow annoyingly hard. I mean, let's see if I, let me see if I can actually, if Google knows the translation. Yeah, you see, it's wrong because Google's saying Baumas and does number of dimensions, which is incorrect. This is, this is called floor area ratio, um, which I used to know the word for that in French and I forgot it. But, um, but it's, it's kind of interesting, by the way, how much technical, policy related stuff is not translated. Like if it's sciences, it's all it's translated. Um, like I can tell you what, um, like mathematical language in German from German papers that I read in undergrad, things like um, Hilfensatz, but, um, but, um, but stuff in the social sciences just isn't translated. Um, just much less internationalized than science academia where you can get a chem degree in Germany in English. Like not an undergrad degree, a, um, an advanced degree, like a, a master's. Um, whereas for example, I know a linguist, an American linguist in Finland, who said that, yeah, everything, in the, the linguistics department works entirely in Finnish. Um, so they have to learn Finnish to, to, to get it. By the way, are there other questions? Oh, 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 okay, yeah, 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 okay. okay. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is, Okay, so by the um, the provision of local public infrastructure has been secret. That's the thing that is, I'm sure, has a lot of very specific interpretations because it's something that NIMBYs talk about all the time about can the infrastructure take it? And um, and, and for example, you, you've seen, you probably have seen my talk about the subway in New York is not at capacity, this one. The one where... Um, I talk about how most subway lines are not at capacity in New York. Um, and then I made another post with a map of where New York could build more housing and only go on underfall subway lines. Now in Berlin, all of the train lines are underfall. Okay, the Stadtbahn and the North-South Tunnel run 18 trains an hour. Um, LCB, if you do linear to the influence of um, the influence of uh, not the influence of um, on the central segment with the short blocks of Munich you get from 18 to 30. And Munich has, I think, more problems with um, weird interlining and single tracking than we do. Um, and so the limits of the electronics are way more than the current traffic. And on the U-Bahn, I think U6 maybe runs every four minutes at peak and everything else runs every five minutes. Um, yeah, okay, so you need to have to be connected to a road. Okay, this is a city, there are roads. Internet, sure. Sewers, sure. Fresh water, sure, although Berlin tap water is not potable, even when there is such a connection. Um, 
And there are these complaints about sewer capacity, but people would know nothing about sewers. Of, I mean, tellingly, in New York, in the, in the mayoral election, the candidate who knew most about sewers, the person was running this, the, the person was running the sanitation department, um, Catherine Garcia, was the MP candidate. Um, and like was with subway capacity, it's the same thing. It's just that there are always these complaints and people making up reasons why he building does not fit because they don't want, want to see more buildings because they like the past more than they like the future, to be honest. Um, are there other questions, by the way? Um, as I said, I'm going to try finishing this before 8, um, but as I said, it is not a hard stop if people start exploding with questions. I'm gonna give it like one or two more minutes just because of the usual lag. Um, but if not, I think. Oh. Yeah, the only, I mean, yeah, road traffic is a capacity constraint, but um, sociologically, remember, the gentrifier is back. Um, the, the car usage among people I know in the city who, yeah, I mean, so okay, so you do parking, so you don't build a lot of parking, which is a good thing, unfortunately. Some new buildings here are built with parking. Um, so, so you claw back space from cars to bikes and um, get and build a better U-Bahn and a better S-Bahn, and you make sure that the destination, so you make sure to avoid job deurbanization, so you make sure that the big job destinations are going to be on the S-Bahn and the U-Bahn, because that's way more important than everything else. Um, and uh, so, so you make sure there are more going to be more jobs, like the Amazon building in many, many, many more like it that Berlin desperately needs. Um, again, we're not a very wealthy city. I mean, we're way wealthier than we were 15 years ago. We I didn't live here 15 years ago. But um, the, but the Amazon needs all of these tech jobs, and so um, lots of there should be many more like the Amazon building. Like Warsaw Platz, or Alexanderplatz, or... Um, the, or what they're building around Hauptbahnhof. Uh, if they can find space near Unterd and Linden, it's nice. Um, uh, maybe around Frankfurt at all. I mean, there is very, I mean, I mean, it's heritage architecture, but with I mean, 1950s Stalinism, and somehow it's just enough. Just, and this is use, actually kind of useful as parks with shade, so it's not a just build another old building in between kind of consideration. But if you can find spaces in between, yeah, go ahead and do it. And, um, and because th these are the central parts of the city, and again, this is the eastern part. This is the, these are the central parts of East Berlin. West Berlin exists too. I mean, just build more. Or, so keep building more. Um, keep building more in uh, around Potsdam Platz, which is where I was when Google Earth once again froze. At this time, also freezing my mouse. Uh, Or, or, or build. Or build near Charlotten, or, or build, not near, build in Charlottenburg near the zoo and near Kultjustendam, which, as we saw, there are spaces there. So make sure the jobs are in these areas. Um, and so, uh, or Gesundbrunn is actually a very good area for jobs because um, it's the intersection of the north-south tunnel main line um, and the north-south main line for intercity trains and the Ren and the UA. So very easy to get there from all over the city. And Ziedkreuz, Tempelhof, Schönebach, places like that. I mean, just build more housing there. Um, sorry, not build more housing, build more jobs there, build more offices there, build more housing everywhere else in the central part of the city. Um, are there other questions?
Have I ever looked at cities other than Berlin, New York? You mean in Germany? Um, only a little bit. Um, I think we once did a, I think we once did Google Earth tourism in Hamburg and Stuttgart. I don't think I ever did this in Frankfurt. Um, I did this a little bit in Köln. Um, but it was, but much of it was on Google Earth tourism, was me walking around Altstadt and Neustadt and Alp tourism. Um, so I also, so I don't know, so for example, I don't know Köln's urban, my, my understanding is that all of the big cities build about 5,000 units per thousand people a year. Köln may be only, so Berlin used to be building three, uh, and, and I think, I think, sure, I think you showed me once that Köln builds around four, um, but Berlin is poor and for a while had high unemployment and then suddenly stopped having high unemployment, which is why they went from about three to about five. Um, units per thousand people per year. Um, it's just that five, I mean, maybe it's high by the standards of 10 years ago or 15 years ago, but in the France on the eve of Corona I was building about seven. I think eight. I think it was eighty something, maybe ninety thousand housing units, and have twelve or thirteen million people in Ile de France. So about seven in a thousand. Metropolitan Seoul builds about ten. Um, so you need to aim for that, and not for only building a little bit. Um, by the way, are there more questions? Yeah, yeah, and I know they're expanding the U-Bahn in that direction, but um, and, and I believe the also I believe the U-Bahn. Wait, no, the, I believe the Hafen City is the cheap U-Bahn, and then the new thing they're building is the expensive one. Um, yeah, but current also only. But I, I mean, I know how much housing. Current build, and it's, I believe, 4,000 units a year, right? So 4,000 away a million, it's 4 per thousand. Um, like, none of these is a very EMB city. I mean, I'm sure they think of themselves as EMB because Germany is an extremely EMB country, so building any housing here is supposed to be bad, which is why you have all these bad faith papers that make up reasons why people who live in new housing are all terrible people who are trying to destroy the, the city's values, but um, yeah, no, I, I know there's redevelopment. I'm just saying, I'm just counting how much housing is actually being built. Um, like if you're telling me about three thousand housing units, kind, I mean, okay, but I mean, that's something that should be. Four or five, no, four or five months of housing construction is actually it's something like nine months of housing construction. Um, like it's ultimately a numbers game you know, of how much is being built, and um, and it could be done, you know, one thousand units at a time. I mean, one, one block that is being redeveloped, you know, maybe like big block, um, crappy. Um, okay, I shouldn't say because a thousand housing units, that's so much more, more like 300 and almost 600 people would live. Um, does anyone here have any more questions? So let's mute while I don't talk.
All right. Um, I think I'll stop this. I'm gonna upload this and also write the companion blog post about not so much redevelopment, but the Berlin um, subway uh, development that needs to happen. The map that I made last week that I just uploaded. Again, see down below in the description. So thank you for watching either on Twitch or on YouTube, and I'll see you in a week.